Hey there, fellow travelers, Mark. And Jocelyn. Here with Walter's World, and we are filming from our hotel in Santa Fe, New Mexico. So I apologize if the signal isn't so good. Their internet was horrible, so I'm using my phone to uh, tether this up there. So let us know if it's actually coming through, uh, so we know if things are happening or not, uh, because I haven't, last time I did the tethering, it worked fine, but we'll see how it works, so... Jocelyn, you want to say hi? Uh, good morning. How are y'all? Um, I guess it's morning where we are. It may not be where you are, uh, but here we are. So, Yeah, so some of the things we want to talk about today, for those that are getting the stream later, is uh, we're going to talk about some fall destinations you might want to go to, some because, you know, Halloween's coming, some scary travel experiences that we've had. Um, we're also going to talk about our time here in Santa Fe, where we're at, and um, let's see... <laughs> uh, and just uh, talk about some things we're going to be doing in October because we did a, a poll a few days ago about uh, what topics we're going to do in October and we had such a good turnout and a good response we decided to do all the countries. So we're going to talk about those things today. And of course, answering your questions. Hey, Ernest, good to see you. Fort Worth, Dominic, all you. Hope you're all doing well. Um, I do hope that the feed, that the, uh, that the feed is coming through. Uh, if you are, let us know. Just say, yeah, it's working so, so we know if it is because, again, when I use the tethering, it's always not easy to know if it's actually working and coming through. Um, hey, Charles in, in, in Colorado. Good to see you, buddy. So uh, I think we'll start off with some fall destinations that we've done that we think are kind of fun. We're here in Santa Fe right now. Um, the, the summer heat is gone, but it's still nice and warm here. And there's tons Lovely. of stuff to see and do, which is really nice. Yeah, it's nice because like we went hiking yesterday for four hours in Bandelier National Monument. And it was fantastic, but it wasn't overly hot. Of course, you still have to stay hydrated because of the altitude and things. But yeah. it was a really good hike. And, um, mm -hmm. yeah, four hours worth, right? Yeah, because uh, the, the thing is, when you go to the Bendular National Monument, it, it's funny because you're supposed to take a, a shuttle up that's like from this town that's like 10 miles away. But we got dropped off at the they, – they can sometimes you get dropped off up there. So they dropped us off. And so they're like, yeah, we'll be back. And then what we thought would be like a two-and-a-half-hour hike when we got back, they're like, that was four hours. I'm like, really? Like we didn't even realize because we, we were had such so a good time. We had so much fun. <laughs> so, so it's nice in the fall travel. We like to do more um, – like it doesn't look like we do, I do movements, but like more movement travel. So you're getting to go out and do stuff and hikes and things like that. So you don't have like the cold frigid of the winter, but also you you don't have the super, super, super hot in the in the in the summer. But also I want to say thank you to Lisa Gilmore, Lear. Yes, uh, good morning, Mark and Joshua from North Georgia. Good to see from we you. We will be in North Georgia soon anyway yeah. for a Georgia game. Go dogs. <laughs> so we'll be Beat there Notre the Dame this weekend. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Brian. We love you too. But thank you, Lisa. That was really nice of you. Um, I'd like to answer this question. Okay. William Charlock asks, um, what are your top three places to ride a bike while traveling? First and foremost, um, the Netherlands, right? Holland. I did a bike tour through um, the tulip fields uh, a few years ago with my girlfriend and my sister. And, oh, my gosh, we had a wonderful time. It was amazing. So uh, that would definitely be number one on my list. And then a lot of people also do Belgium because it's flat. So another really popular biking place. And you have a lot of small towns you can go to. Um, also, what you can look at is when you're in the Netherlands, you can actually do these canal things. So, like, you can, you leave your stuff on the canal boat, and it goes down. You ride and meet them at the next place. Yeah, that's so really cool. cool. And then a lot of people like to do France um, for, for bike rides as well. But if you're getting out of there, there's a lot of places in the U.S. too. Um, in the south, there's a lot of people that like to do that. So there are correct Oh, I got Lear correctly. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad. So thank you, Lisa. Uh, Germany travel, Darian. I don't know why my buddy Darian, the uh, Germany tra Germany travel what are personal you guy, doing on he, here. He should not be talking to us. He should be eating spaghetti ice in Germany right now, like at least five or six in yeah, front of him. So he's I don't know. Doing a little he should have no hands to type. That's all I'm saying, Darian. Okay. Um, okay. Ernest, I have not been to Gouda, but I have eaten a lot of it. <laughs> so. um. Hey, so somebody, where did it go? Um, somebody is moving from Australia to Florence. I think that's a wonderful thing. She's moving for six months. We ha And she asked for tips. We have a video on um, expat life. What is it called? We have, we have a few. I have one. There's some older ones, but they're still good things, like 10 things to consider before you move abroad. Um, those are like serious topics you have to have, like from like spousal stuff. Because like when Jocelyn came with me to Portugal, I had the permit to work and she didn't. And so that caused... 
It was a tough time because it took 13 months to get her 12 month permit. I mean, it was insane. <laughs> it was expired when I got it. Yeah, like we had to I go early in the morning to get the old one to get the new one, then it later that day. Uh, so yeah. there is that. Um, also, we have like five love and hates of working abroad, five love and hates of living abroad, five and hates of moving abroad. Um, they're a few years old, but they still will give you a lot of really good information. Scott Neal, good to see you up on there, buddy. Um, scroll through, see some more questions. Uh, Deathlock Rocks 14. Hey, Mark and Joss, we'll spend a few days, two days in New York for the first time Friday to Sunday. What would you recommend to do for two days? Um, I would recommend going to Ellis Island. So you take the boat ride so you can see the Statue of Liberty. Don't get off at the Statue of Liberty Island. You want to get off at Ellis Island and do the tour there. That's really a cool experience. But the Statue of Liberty is just more fun to see as you go by on the boat. So that could be really nice. Um, also, uh, the, the Met. You got to go to the Met. The Metropolitan Museum of Art is one of the best museums in the world and a great rant, collection of all kinds of different arts and antiquities well worth going to also the natural history museum is fantastic and you can walk through central park between the two of them so that's what i would definitely make sure you're doing and of course grab a slice of new york style pizza you'll have a good time with that <laughs> uh, um, davy trout asks uh what's your favorite city from brazil and from mexico my favorite city in brazil well there's joao pessoa in the northeast and then there is Ouro Preto, uh, i was gonna say Ouro which Preto. is a Minas Gerais, and then i like um I like well, then I like the Pantanal region just to go out in the swamps and stuff like that. But I think João Pessoa and um, by Ma, kind of by Maceió up there. I, for me, Ouro Preto, Ouro Preto, Ouro Preto it's really nice. And there's a lot of cute little towns near there. You can just hire somebody to drive you to those places. It's really lovely. Yeah, Alex Holt in Hull, Yorkshire. Hey. I'm going to be in Yorkshire early next year, so uh, I'll try to help uh, represent your area. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. So Tony Anima writes, I just got back from a six-day bike trip in Algarve, Portugal. It's beautiful and challenging. I bet it was challenging. Yeah, because Portugal, since it's the end of the continent, it has a lot more undulations and stuff like that. But if you're in the Algarve, it, there's that. But if you're going in from Algarve, going if you're going north up to Lisbon, you have a lot of really dry areas. So make sure you stay hydrated and do that. But there is a lot of people that like to do that in the south. So yeah. that is cool. But hey, man, Pedro. Good to ride. see you. Oh. Let's see. Oh, hey, Robert Reedling. Hopefully I got Reedling. Robert right. Reedling, thank you very much for the super chat. Thanks for your great advice on Tanat wine in Uruguay. Yeah. Yes, that is awesome wine. Also discovered Carmenere wine in Santiago. Just need to find these in the UK now. Okay, so Tanat yeah, Tanat is really tough. I've, we talked to wine experts, and they're like, I heard about this Uruguayan wine. For those of you that don't know, Uruguay has a very special wine called Tanat, and the entire region where they can even make it is smaller than some of the bigger producers of wine, like companies in Argentina. So there just isn't a lot out there to, to buy uh, in the open market. There, it's like the entire region is like one medium-sized vineyard in France, let's yeah. say. So, so it's They're very, small. very, very tough to do. So, But it's so good. But it's good. so good. It's a great red wine. If you ever get <laughs> yeah. a chance, definitely have it. Robert, you're right on, buddy. You're right on. Super. Lucky, lucky guy. <laughs> Bill Shaper waiting at the airport now. I'm spending one day in Paris tomorrow. What is the best cafe I shouldn't miss? Um, I think any one you go to, you'll be fine as long as you get an outdoor seat. Make sure you get your back to the cafe and you can just watch people go by. That's what we always try to do. Jasmine Medina, thank you. Yes, the green ch chili capital of the world is New Mexico, and yeah. we have eaten our weight in green chili. Yes, I am. And I am, red, too. <laughs> yes, and it was funny this year, whenever you get any, like if you ever go to any place that sells New Mexican cuisine, which is different than Tex Mex, by the way, when you get it, they'll ask you, do you want red, green, or Christmas? I'd actually have that in our Don'ts of Santa Fe video. Don't be afraid to celebrate Christmas every day because you can have your, your, your Southwestern food with green chili sauce and red chili sauce. So. Super awesome. Jorge, when you visit, um, did you visit San Jose when you were in Costa Rica? And if you did, can you give me your honest opinion of it? Pura Vida. Pura Vida. <laughs> so, Pura Vida. So, Jorge, we went there. I mean, it was worth a day to see stuff. I think you're better off going to staying at more of the beach places and or going up in Arnal and staying time there. Um, it's To fly out, it's easy enough. Like, I mean, we flew in and left right away, but then we went back to San Jose uh, the night before our flight and stayed at a hotel there and then our flight got canceled so we ended up staying like three days in San, um, San Jose and then we ended up going back to the coast because they said look we're not going to be able to get you out for another, a few more days so we just went to the we went to the coast instead so, so it was a really short trip but we enjoyed our time so yeah. but I think um, the, the nature stuff's probably more tourist friendly yeah uh, let's see. Renex, we have not been to Ukraine, but we're looking into going there. Uh, we have someone just wrote, hey, you'll love Austin. We've been to Austin. We actually have the Don'ts of Austin, what's eating Austin. We got a few videos if you want to check those out, but we had a nice time when we were on Austin. Someone asked if we had been to Miami. I think it was Jimmy UK. Yeah. And uh, hey, Jimmy. yes, we have been well, to Miami. Well, I've been to Miami, but I was there with um, a friend who was ill. 
and she was down there for treatment. So I didn't do any of the normal stuff. We kind of just stuck around home. So I, honestly, I wish I could give you more information, um, Jimmy, but Miami was cool from what I saw of it. So uh, Francis Burnett, any suggestions for restaurants in Palermo, Sicily? Here now and love it so far. So what I would do is just ask the people at your the concierge at the front desk, like, hey, where, where can I get like real Palermo food? And they'll they'll give you some suggestions. And if you see that there's mostly Italians there or Sicilians there, you'll be okay. Yeah. Um, I can't think of any place off the top of my head, and that's why a lot of times we don't do like exact restaurant recommendations because restaurants change so so quickly. So quickly, yeah. So, but right below that, Christina asks if we have any personal tips about Rome, and um, yes. I can actually recommend one restaurant there. It's called Est Est Est, and it is it's a local dive and, and nothing nothing fancy nothing fancy, but it's all locals. The food's amazing. Well, now and now a lot more tourists are going there. It, now, sadly. Well, that makes me sad. But, yeah, but um, the, the food like it, it's food. it's affordable food with and and not, the people are really nice. So that was really good. I mean, we went there one time with Liam. We've been going there for like ten years. And uh, we were there one time when Liam was a baby. And oh, he it, was like, like weeks old. Like weeks old. And they like, oh, no, yeah. mom and dad must see. We will hold the baby. So we got to meet the owners <laughs> and stuff like that. So it was really They carried fun. our children around, took Caleb back with them to the, to the, the kitchen. kitchen. And yeah, it was good time. Great people. So Daniel, thank Daniel, you. Daniel, thank you very much for the Super Chat. Any tip? His question is, any tips for traveling for big events like the Olympics or World Cup? Other than not going, ha ha ha! Thank you for your answer, your awesome videos. Oh shucks, you're too nice. So plan what, ahead, early. plan way ahead. And the thing is, if you're going to be looking, the thing is, when you're booking flights, flights you can't buy until about eleven months before, maybe eleven and a half months before. But hotel rooms you can usually book up to two years in advance. So what you, if you're going to be, if you know you're going to go, you might want to book your hotel so you already have that taken care of, and then get your flights when you're going there. Um, also, if you're going to big time events, a lot of them will have lotteries for the tickets, like the Olympics and the, the World Cup. Sometimes not anybody can buy a ticket, but sometimes it's the lottery to buy to have the chance to buy tickets. So make sure you're getting involved in all those things out there. Also, if you're going to be buying tickets on the secondary market, you know, scalp tickets or things like that, realize that some place will actually have it that only that one person, like the ticket, will be linked to that person's like passport or number right. for security purposes, and also so then they can make sure they get their money and it's not someone buying a hundred tickets and then reselling them so so that would be one thing i'd say there but i would definitely say go they're great experiences we've been in europe uh during world or during uh european cups and world and cups world and stuff cups. like that and we've gone to places before like we went to brazil right before the world cup was and there russia. in russia before the world cup was there as well to get people more information about you know traveling those there for places, those events yeah. so we have things like that so that there are some things for you Okay, Lisa Gilmore. Leah, oh, you're back. Hey, if you're staying in Frankfurt with friends for 18 days as a base, where are the best day trips to, would go? Oh, my. Can you not stay in Frankfurt 18 days? I, I was thinking the same thing. 18 days is a dang long time to be yeah, in Yeah, but, but if you have to be there, you can go down to Heidelberg. That's You can go down there. That's a definite must. There's a bunch of vineyards. Bom, no, Bomberg's too far. Okay. Like for a day trip. Uh, but you can go to Rothenburg. That could be a day trip from spend there. Spend the night in Bomberg. Well, yeah, you can spend the night down there. You can go anywhere and spend the night uh, <laughs> if you're, for the 18 days. Uh, you can get up to Cologne, um, Bonn. You can get to down to Stuttgart. You can get to a lot of places relatively quickly, but it'll be, they'll be long day trips. But I think the easier ones, look for the vineyards. Like do a Rhine boat tour, oh, and, and you'll idea. get to see a bunch of little villages and vineyards and stuff like that. That's what I would kind of recommend doing. Because with 18 days, I'm guessing you have probably work or something like that that you're there for, so maybe don't have a lot of free time so there is that um let's see Do -do -do. oh sorry we're just jumping around on us <laughs> okay. aaron messer thank you very much for the super chat good morning from buffalo thanks for all the amazing videos you guys are the best thank you we yeah. almost lived we in almost, we almost yeah at kenesha's college i was interviewing there and they didn't know if i would fit in so they, they couldn't give me an answer and i ended up at where i am now we had another one we had another one come another up offer, so, so. so we, we ended up leaving so it was we had a nice time talking to their people so that was nice hi david what are you doing right now if you're <laughs> supposed to be in school no he's not it's saturday oh it's saturday <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, Jocelyn Sorry, keeps David. Track of time. <laughs> so Dana J, thank you very much for the super chat. Favorite things to do in Ecuador. I'm going there with my nine and twelve year old in November. Perfect. This is a great bioecological thing you're going to go to. Now, if you go to Galapagos, it's insane expensive, but you'll you'll be fine seeing so all this much stuff. To do. But like, 
it, for a historic city, I love Cuenca. We loved going to Cuenca, and there's town. all kinds of stuff you can do around there, and that's in the Highlands. Okay, um, Quito is actually cool to check out too. We had a good time there. Quito um, was great hiking. We had a really wasn't that where we went in that well, big well, hike around that lake and everything. Oh yeah, you can do road trips. Yeah, because when you're that in Quito, cool. yeah, there's some hikes you can do down there. You can hire guides to take you. Um, all, we would use Southern Explorations. They were nice. They had some good guides. The best guide Miguel we've ever had. Best, Miguel with Southern Explorations was the so best guide. incredible, and and we've had a guide or two in our yeah. in our time. Yeah, so. and and also for the kids, they might like. There's the the center of the world. There's the equator line. But there's two of them. There's the one that has the big monument. Then there's one that has like fun activities. That's the actual equator. So I would definitely That's go there and really check cool. that and out. And also so. the cloud forest. Um, yeah. We got to go up there for three days. We weren't dry. Not at all. Like our clothes were wet. The whole oh, time. And they don't. And they don't dry. They but don't dry. It. Amazing. But it was amazing. Ec- it, the ecology there was yeah. so cool. And I think we have a kids in Ecuador video specifically, yes, we do. so you can look that up. Just put up Walter's World Ecuador on YouTube, and you'll find a bunch of stuff. And if you're going to November, I'll try to get out. Uh, if, I'll try. I'm going to guess you're probably going for Thanksgiving, so I'll try to get out a couple more Ecuador videos beginning of November uh, to help you out. So there's that. And so far, thank you very much for the super chat. You guys are wonderful and so helpful. What do you think the best time is to visit New Orleans? And what are some of the great sites to see when you're there? So we've got plenty of videos in the best. I got a top ten videos list. I got a shocks video. I got a don'ts video. I've got actually no. I'm actually editing shocks of and what to know before you go video when you're there. Um, but I would say is best time to visit New Orleans is don't go during the Mardi Gras season because it's, just, it's oh, it, insanely overpriced and insanely crazy with all the people. Yeah. Also, I would not go in July and August because just too it's dang too hot. hot. So I would like we we usually go like July February before then because. Very few tourists. July, February. Oh, sorry. No, sorry. January, February. <laughs> because there's fewer tourists there. There's less craziness there. And you can really go and enjoy the sites. Because there's a lot of cultural stuff to do there, too. Like the World War II Museum there is fantastic. That's the a mus- really cool the, museum. The aquarium there is fantastic. Doing the tours, the Garden District. There's all kinds of stuff. So, so But I would do like... a. I would do anywhere like November through February would be the best times. Because it just gets so hot there when you're there. Um Michael Mon, thank you very much for the super chat, buddy. Good to see you again. I saw you pop up there before. Any thoughts on visiting Panama and specifically traversing the Panama Canal Zone? So we have a lot of friends that actually have done that, and we've looked at going to Panama. We were actually going to do a Panama Colombia trip uh, this spring. This, no, well, it was going to be spring break. Then we moved it to Christmas time, and then we've had some things come up, so we cannot go anywhere we're not going anywhere this this christmas time so that kind of got thrown to the wayside but uh everyone has had a good time going there seeing those things a lot of people do it as part of a cruise uh when they do that but panama is a very popular place to go if you're going to be going from columbia to panama it's a bit complicated i'll just say that right now so maybe make panama go panama to costa rica if you're going to be doing an extended on your trip so there's that douglas mclaughlin thank you very much for the super chat my friend McLaughlin. next laughlin oh sorry mclaughlin mclaughlin Scott. sorry 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 douglas my bad <laughs> <laughs> next summer we're going to scott the scottish highland scott highland debate it should be based out of fort william or inverness oh, I think De- should we be based oh out of fort, fort william, william or inverness or inverness debating if we will be comfortable do overnight caledonia train sleeper car ever done overnight sleeper car so i do not recommend overnight sleeper cars if you are over the age of 25 because your back and your body will hurt <laughs> um that is one of the big things there um if i was going to look at staying places inverness or fort william are both um good places to stay uh, we like inverness a bit better because it, we like to go up in the highlands and go explore a bit more whereas fort william's farther down and that's going to get you kind of access to isle of sky and get you down to you know like glasgow or, or sterling a little bit easier um, so if you want more facilities, there's more in Inverness. But if you want more of a compact place, Fort William would be a better place to go. But I, I try to stay away from the sleeper cars because my back just hates me. I vote Inverness, too. Yes. So let's see. Let's go back and find it's some more questions. Really speedy there. Yeah. <laughs> Is yes. Chicago worth visiting if you are from Europe? Yes. yes. There's some really great museums. There's some really great food. We got some. We got tons of videos from Chicago. Great theater too. Yeah, great theater. You can see. You can see a lot of stuff that's from New York there at a, a fraction of the price, and then have a nice time when you are there. A lot of good hotels downtown as well. Um, so there is that. And, and honestly, Chicago has some of the best museums in in the entire country. And I mean, I put them up there with the Art Institute of Chicago is as good as any of the the major ones in Europe as well. But the the Shedd Aquarium is fantastic. The the Museum of Science and Industry is definitely must whether you're young or old. It's really cool. Um, Jeff Harden asks, uh, first time traveling outside North America, going to the UK and Scotland. I heard Good we choice. have to have a credit card with a PIN. Costco credit card, Citibank, uh, says I don't need one. Your experience. So the only thing you need to PIN for is your debit card. 
Um, you can't take any cash out without a PIN number. You can get a PIN number with your, your credit cards that you ask, but they'll tell you it's only for, you know, crash, tra- like taking money out. But if you have a credit card in Europe, just purchases, you just purchases all you'll do is swipe and they'll have you sign. You do not know how to have it. Even if, if you have the chip, they still make you sign. Yeah. So, I don't know why. Yeah. But if you have the, because even when I have pens for my credit cards, they still have me sign out, put a pen in, unless it's my debit card. Then if I pay with my debit card that has a MasterCard or Visa logo, I put the pen in and it's just like, back home so hopefully that helps um, out <clears throat> a couple times i've seen uh recommendations for santiago chile come up so i have not been to santiago in 20 years um but and i I've do never remember been. but i do remember santiago and chile having the most amazing empanadas possible just watch out for the olive inside so you don't choke on the, the there's stone. an olive in the well they might have an olive in it and stuff like that but they're fantastic with a pit yes <laughs> live a little woman get out of it <laughs> um I remember, I like the Plaza de Armas. I remember really enjoying it. I remember thinking I could come back here. I actually came back twice in 1998. I went there twice because I liked it so much. So it's been a long, like, I, we, we need to get back down there for it. But if you go there, go to Vina del Mar, and that's the coast there. Now, the water is freezing cold because it's coming from Antarctica. I'll just tell you right now, it's freezing cold. But it's got some of the most beautiful sunsets. So definitely check that out when you're there. So, Jim Jim Morbo, Denver, Colorado, any suggestions going for Halloween, November 1st? Thank you. I've never been to Denver. I, you know, during that time, like, I would suggest Rocky Mountain National Park. It's a, it's a ways, but worth it. But I don't know, that time of the weather, I don't know. I can't really help either. Sorry. Okay, Jesse Cannon, suggestion for two days in Quedlinburg, Hearts Mountains in yes. December with small kids. Not a lot of English language information on the area. Okay, so I do have a video, Five Love and Hates of the Hearts Mountains, or and it talks about Venigo Oda and, and all that. Also, you should watch our Don'ts of Christmas Markets. I filmed that. I think part of it was in Venigo Oda. And then I have some other parts from Quedlinburg. You'll see there. Those places are – Hearts Mountains, Hearts Mountains are – perfect with kids at christmas time because they'll have little areas for kids to play there's all the food out there they have all the the sites and stuff you're, you're making a great choice taking your kids there so don't worry um you can stay in quedlinburg but you need to book now because on the weekends quedlinburg has like their open door mm-hmm. thing so like the inner courtyards get opened up and so there's like extra christmas stuff inside so you're there on the weekend make sure you're booking i mean you might not be able to get place now but book now otherwise it's easier you can find places in Venigo Oda, um which is, which a, is a cute, cute town. super cute town so, super so you can do sweet. that and they have so. the witch thing Yes, and there's the witch. Yeah. Your, your kids will get kids, witch wishes. The kids loved it. They thought yeah. that was so much fun. Okay. Any tips on Russia? We have been, we were in St. Petersburg two years ago, I think. Um, Mark has been much more than I have, but um, we do have a couple of videos on mm. um, on Russia, so you can look those up, and that's all of our information. <laughs> So off the beaten path, hey, thank you for all the comments on our Professor Walters channel. So off the beaten path comments on a lot of our videos um, over there, so I've talked to them quite a bit. Um, so if you want to check out our second channel, youtube.com slash Professor Walters, we talk about you know, what's it like to run a YouTube channel and marketing and stuff like that. But have we have any plans for going to Greenland? Um, actually, we beat ourselves up because when we were in Iceland, they had day trips over to Greenland, and we did not do it when we were there, and I still regret not doing it, so we will get there eventually. We'll do it. Um, do you have any tips for flying around Christmas time? Pack your patience. Yes. <laughs> Big time, because a lot of people who never fly end up flying at that time. So get to your um, airport earlier than the two hours suggested. I we You know, it's always better to be there significantly early than to be there and risk not being able to get anywhere. So um, pack your patience. Make sure that you have that 311 bag ready, you know, the, the one the side, the court bag, bag um, and that you don't have too much stuff and pack light and check your bags, um, check as much as you possibly can because that makes just it a little it bit easier way. getting through the airport. Because everyone's going to be trying crowded. to take everything on the planes and it's just a pain in the butt. So if you can just keep your carry on to a thing that you can get underneath your front seat, it'll make your life a lot easier because people have all their suitcases and their carry ons to be two packed and their coats. It's a pain. But also, here's the thing. If you're flying on Christmas Day or you fly like on Thanksgiving Day, sometimes you actually get cheaper flights and there's more availability because people aren't flying on Thanksgiving Day or on Christmas Day. They're flying right before or right after. So there's um, that. I want to answer this. There are two questions. So no, we've never been to Wyoming. I <laughs> have. Yes, oh, you a have. child. Yeah. And yes, we are planning going to India. Um, okay. So Abigail is a week in Paris enough to see a lot of stuff. Yes. 
you can see a lot of stuff, but there will never be enough time in Paris. Um, that's why we go back all of the time. And then there was a question right after that, but you zipped by it. Now Sorry. I don't know what it was. Oh, it was Normandy, and they only have a day. Would we would we suggest them getting a guide? Um, you don't have to have one because all of the sites um, are really well. Um, what, what am I trying to think? Of? I have you know, like every the signage person. is really good, and it's in, in a lot of different languages, so it makes it pretty easy. But getting to all the places is more difficult. So a guide would be very helpful with getting you around. You'd also get a ton of information. It would be like a ton at one time. Yeah, uh, very true. And here's one thing. With guides, if it's a city you really want to know a lot about and you don't have a lot of time, sometimes it's best to have a guide to get yeah. the most out of it. So Douglas McLaughlin, yes, Chicago does have some of the nicest people too. So that is always a helpful thing. And thank you for the super chat. Let's see. There's Ecuador follow-up. Oh, Benjamin Brummer, thank you very much, man. Been a while since I've been able to catch a super chat. Just showing support to my favorite tra family travelers. Hope to see you in San Diego again. I thank would you. like to get back. Uh, if you if you all looking for a place to go in California, San Diego's the place. That place, dude. San Diego's awesome. San Diego, awesome. Uh, Dana J, thank you for your super she chat. Did oh, did we do that? Yeah, we did that. No. Yes, we did. It was Ecuador. I know, but it was a follow up, dear. Oh, sorry. If we only have three. No I love you. I don't. Um, if we only have three nights, is it still worthwhile to go to the Galapagos? Thanks so much. Um, I wouldn't go. Yeah, for the, the amount of money you're going to pay to get there, because you don't really... It's so expensive it's for so that expensive short It's so expensive for time. that short time, because if it's, you only have three days in Ecuador, and then you have a travel day and you want to see stuff, so you'd, really only, you'd only be doing a Galapagos trip. Like, if you were flying in and going straight to Galapagos and spent the whole time there and then flew out from there, then yes. But otherwise... Um, Jet Jimley asked about um, Santa Fe and if, what our suggestions are. So, one, Bandelier uh, National Monument was really wonderful. Um, two, I would suggest going to Meow Wolf. Um, meow as in a cat and wolf as in a dog. It's crazy. Um, it is crazy. Craziest place. I, I, we have to come back here with the kids because it was just if you go, so fun. So, if you go to Jocelyn's... Instagram at Jocelyn Worlds or my Instagram at Walter's World. Uh, we have pictures from Meow Wolf. I mean, it's like insane. It was it it's was crazy. so much fun. How many hours did we spend in that oh, we were, place? We were there like three or four. <laughs> They're like, was, oh, give yourself two hours. It was just like wow. No, I need more. Yeah, I just it's, I could have spent days. It's, it, it's there. like it's like a psychedelic trip of craziness and just weirdness, but awesomeness. I mean, it's just yeah, yeah. Um, Frank Feeney, greetings from Keto. Hey. I'm currently studying abroad here. That's pretty cool. cool. I'm also already going. He's already gone to Galapagos, Peru, and the Amazon. What else should I do in South America? Oh, in South America? Mm -hmm. Oh man, <laughs> well, <that> was, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> so you get to Cusco, go to Machu Picchu in Peru. That would be the big thing to do if you go to Peru. If you far farther down, you could go to the Salada Uni, which is like where Bolivia and Argentina and Chile meet, and do go on the soft, soft flats. flats there and go for like a, a jeep tour there. I really like that when I studied abroad. Uh, if you go farther afield, I would go to the northwest or the northeast of Brazil. Uh, that's that's a good place to go for some fun times. Um, you want to go far, looking for a big city, Santiago, Buenos Aires. Well, I mean, again, like I said before, I don't remember much about Santiago, but I remember I really enjoyed it. So there's some other things for you. All right. How are Caleb and Liam doing? They're doing well. <laughs> they're doing well. They're with Grandma and Grandpa right now, back home. Yeah. So they're, they, you know, Caleb's only gotten a few detentions while we've been away. <laughs> now they're doing good. What he did. He did. Yes. So. Yes, I little shorty, I agree. Jocelyn does look beautiful today, like every day. So, yeah, there is that. Um, Stefan Bush, no, we have not been to UAE yet, but we are looking into that. We're trying to, we might put together like an Ethiopia um, and UAE and around, and around that area um, next year. We're going to try to look for stuff. Illich Gardens has a Meow Wolf dark ride. Oh, that sounds interesting. That sounds crazy. Yeah. Veggies by Eos. Hey, for, hey, in Central Illinois, good to see you on here. I look like the mother in Psycho. I've never okay. seen Psycho. I don't like scary movies. You mean the part like at the end? Isn't that the one? Yes, that, that that's that, that, that one. From? And the, the mother's been dead for a long time, so it's just her body there. That person wasn't very nice. Oh, thanks. Or she might Love might, you might, might look like the guy that dressed up like his mother. I, I don't know. Oh. Yeah. Awesome. See? Wonderful thanks. people. Um, let's see. Best summer destination in Europe. I think any place can be great. But I think if you, I think the better way to look at this: what places are way better to go in the summer versus would, other time of the year? I was Scandinav thinking 
Yeah, Northern you, Europe, If you do the Scandinavia, yeah. Sweden, Finland, Norway, you do those in the summertime because then it's just nature everywhere and you're not freezing cold. You can enjoy the midnight sun and go out. And They have wonderful festivals throughout Scandinavia and Northern Europe, so that would be the best thing if you're looking for a kind of thing like that. It's so super clean, too. Uh, B&B in York or Scotland? Jerry Chavez, either one you're going to do great. I'd do B&Bs and either of them you'll be fine. Um, let's see. Um, James Land, should we rent a car to travel France or take a train? So you can do either. Um, yeah. it, it's completely up to you. We have done both. Actually, we regularly do both. So um, it just depends on if you want to stop and see things along the way or if you just want to get to your destination. If you want to get to your destination, take a train. Um, but otherwise, if you just want to pop around and, and go by the seat of your pants, a, a car is the way to do it. Or if you're going to be staying in one specific region, I would probably run a car too because you can have like a base and yeah. go out from there. So Michael writes, how can I travel during the semester? All my classes have harsh attendance policies. I know, those professors, they're the worst. They want you to be there and learn. Um, what I would recommend is, one, schedule your classes so you have like Fridays off so you could like fly out Thursday nights and then, you know, and go do stuff. Because I teach Tuesday, Thursday, so I'll leave and we'll go – you know, Thursday night till sometimes we like literally, Jocelyn has dropped me off at class from the airport at an 8 a.m. class. So I try to schedule that. Look, and one of the things you can look for is find other airports by where you are. So like, you know, you say you're at UIUC, so there's Champaign. You also have Bloomington, which is 45 minutes away. You have Peoria. Indianapolis, which is two hours away. You got Peoria, which Chicago's is hour and a half. Two hours. two hours. So you can look for those. So you can like, look, if I finish class at three, I get up to Chicago by six. I can do the, the, the red eye flight to Las Vegas and spend Friday, Saturday there. Then I come back on Sunday. I'm back for class on Monday. So a lot of really comes <laughs> to scheduling and these kind of things. Um, Don't move it, please. BD, super quick question. Brussels or Bruges for late autumn? Bruges, oh, Bruges, yeah, I agree. Bruges, <laughs> Bruges, and then Bruges are also Ghent. Ghent, yeah, Gens that too. Um, and then, uh, and or going to Ljubljana just after Christmas, do you uh, recommend checking out Lake Bled? Absolutely. Yeah. Really cool place. Oh, it'll be with snow then? Oh, God. Yeah, it'll be, so it'll be beautiful there. Yeah, yeah so, definitely, and, definitely. And we had a great time in Ljubljana this summer. Actually, all of it was wonderful, so. Okay. James Land, why do you like VRBO over Airbnb? I like safety. Well, <laughs> well just safety like for you. <laughs> yeah, um, you notice it's always the Airbnb that have that. the cameras that are hidden and stuff like that. No, for me, I, I feel that Airbnb. I mean, there are some great Airbnbs. We, we we've used it before too. I can't say we don't use it all. We don't use it. You know, okay. So we do use Airbnb and we use VRBO. I find that VRBO has more people whose houses and apartments are set up as uh, rentals versus someone that's like, I'm gone this week and I want to make some money, so you're going to stay in their house. And the thing is, there's a different feel when you stay at somebody's house versus something that's for an apartment. Because we've gone to places that were Airbnbs where it's like, oh, hey, don't do this, don't do this. We were in one place, they had their insulin bottles in the refrigerator. I'm like, you, you can't leave your medicine out like this. So it, it's there's there's those things. Yeah. And and a lot of times I feel the VRBOs is like, they since they, this is geared as a rental, they have the amenities. Like they have the games that kids can play. They have the music. They have uh, like a, more booklets on what you should see and do and the thing. So it has a little bit more of the hotel kind of helpfulness. Right. And what I also like is it's a little more like um, a hotel in that if something goes wrong, you have a little more um, recourse. recourse in case something you know in case something does go wrong. Because Airbnb you can go to VRBO, but if with Airbnb. You may or may not get squat, and and it's really just a roll of the dice. So um, I feel safer in a VRBO than I do an Airbnb. On like as far as protecting my investment in, in what I've paid for a week or whatever to stay there. Yeah. So Katsy, first time flying with a plane, do you ever have any tips and what to consider? So we have a thing. Look up how to survive a long haul flight. Walter's World on YouTube. We've got all kinds of tips on there for you, okay? Watch that video. There's like 17 different things, I think, on there. But one of the big ones is get an aisle seat or a window seat. Like, pay the extra money to make sure you can pick your seat so you can be as most comfortable as possible, okay? Um, we also just did that one on on uh, the security. So oh, yeah. Going through and security, yeah, so we that have, might be helpful Yeah, you can, you. it's like Security Line 101 or something like that. It's like four videos ago. So if you look on our... Uploads. Go to youtube.com slash Walters World. Click videos and just scroll down. You'll see you'll see a little video there for it. Uh, June probably not. She's she said she was 
that was the the Normandy question. Um, she's going to see the World War II beaches. Need to know if we need a guide to see the important things. Oh no, no, no. and um, make sure you go to was it Utah Beach and go to the the cemetery there. The, the or cemetery, Omaha Beach. Omaha, Omaha Beach. Beach. They, they just redid the 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 visitor center and the cemetery. It's below ground, so you'll go in and you go downstairs. It is an incredible, incredible experience. And um, what was the What's the really great museum that we went to? Not not in Hoon, but in Bayo. In Bayo, um, that was a really great World War II. It was just really and you can moving. See the, and you can see the Bayo tapestry when you are in Bayo yeah. as well. Um, there was another one on the right. Patrick McNulty, when are you guys going to Northern Ireland? Uh, not this October, but next year October. So we're 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 going there. We were supposed to go this October, but a friend or a friend has a bir- a very special birthday, so we have to go with him. And he didn't want to so go to Ireland, got so, changed. so things got switched um, around. Francis, um, well, I did not do that. It jumped itself. Okay, Francis, it there you go. There, I know Mark mentioned disliking JFK. <laughs> we both do. Um, flying back from Italy to JFK, what should I expect concerning TSA customs, etc.? DTW long, is not long, so busy. Long. JFK makes me nervous. It's just, it's just, it's cu- just a pain in the it's ass. It's just, it's just customs takes forever because you'll go through, you'll come mm-hmm. through, and then you get in a line, and then you gotta go to the little kiosk where you say yes, I'm okay, or no, I didn't bring anything bad back, and then you get in another line. It just, it just takes a long time. It's just. And the other thing the other. is, they're doing a lot of construction at JFK, so live through it, and it may be better the next time you come around. But uh, we had to. The last time we flew through G- JFK was about a year ago, and we had to leave. Well, I flew last month. Ugh. Well, okay, so. But we had to leave the terminal that we flew into, and we had to walk outside in the rain. In the rain. It wasn't rain. It wasn't like and this was slow like, slush rain. Oh lord! Oh, it was horrible. It was it was yeah, like thirty four degrees, Portugal. so just barely above freezing, and it was it was miserable. And we had to go. It was probably a half a mile, and it wasn't very clear where we were going. Everybody was like, "What the heck?" And that could have been the construction issue, or it could be just how it is. But no one no one says they like nuts. JFK. So Olga Schenfeld, another one of our ops and commenters, good to see. Yeah. So suggested a week long Belgium trip. So what I would do, I would do uh, one thing. I was Bruges is a definite. And when you're at Bruges, do a day trip to to do the World War One battlefields and visit places like Ypres. Okay, so you figure two days in, in Bruges and then a day trip to Ypres, then spend a couple days in Ghent, and then you can go to like the Ardennes region and do that, or you can go to Antwerp, which is a cool city, or you can go spend a few days in Brussels. But I mean, the key thing is the the Ghent. Bruges area and they're right near near each other so it's not that far um, so you guys should use one as a base and go see all the other stuff because then you don't have to like pack or repack those kind of things hey Mark what do you hey, think what? about this question James Pollard asks what is the best uh, non-touristy Greek island Rhodes isn't too bad sure they're all they're all touristy. If you want non touristy um, islands, Kefalonia. yeah, Kefalonia. You're gonna go instead of where where all those islands are, Crete and Santorini. If you go to the other side, like the Italian side of Greece, over that way, the west, the, side. The west side, you're gonna have less touristy stuff. We're actually gonna be going there next summer. Yeah. So we have that. Um, there was one I was reading. I just lost Joseph Paul. Oh, I got that one. Um, Anastasia, thank you for the information. Videos love from Russia. Thank you very much. Spasila. Um, Hey, James Land, glad we could help out. Thanks for watching. Okay, Alyssa Branham, Leiden or Harlem in the Netherlands? Harlem. Leiden's nice, but I like Harlem more. Uh, but you yeah. can do both because there's so, both. I mean, it's like one's 20 minutes, one's, the other one's 18 minutes from Amsterdam. So you can go and see both. But if you're going to look to stay, I would stay in Harlem. So Thanks, Patrick. I'm glad you like my hair. I like yeah. it too. <laughs> hey, Robin in New York City. I'm going to be there this time next year. Can't wait to be back. Um, Let's see. Janet Lopriato. Sorry, I butchered your name. I apologize. Thanks for your travel tips. We avoided strangers offering help for money and an attempted at pickpocket in Naples. Hey, that's I'm awesome. Glad we, I'm glad we can help out. And that, that's one reason Feels why we good, do these right? It is when we get things like this, like, hey, Mark, you actually helped us not get robbed. You helped us find a better thing. It's really, that's, that, you guys don't understand how much when I see those, like, all those thank yous on there. I wish I could say thank you right back, but then we would just be like, thank you, thank you, thank you all the time. It really means the world to us, all your great comments, and, and I'm just so glad we can help you out. Sahil, hey, um, winter holidays in Europe for about 10 days, Austria and Germany, good for Christmas and New Year's, absolutely. Uh, one of my favorite times um, in Austria in the winter was when we went to uh, Salzburg. Yeah. That was a really fun thing because you think of Salzburg, you think of uh, the sound of music and all the spring and happy summer and whatever, but it was really awesome in the winter. We had a great time. Yeah. So, Avria, uh, sorry, 
Avery Ziasita. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm butchering names today. Um, Avery asks, hey, guys, I'm taking a short trip to Norway soon. Any tips on going through customs <coughs> easier? So glad you're doing a live chat right now. So, Avery, customs is actually pretty simple. Um, what you'll be doing, you'll... When you get you'll get like you'll get off your plane and you just go get in the line. You follow the signs for a custom you know passport control, and you'll just wait in line. They'll and they'll call you up. You give them the passport. They'll ask, they'll, they'll ask you probably if they ask you any questions because it depends on your passport how many questions they ask. You know what? Why are you going to be here? Well, I'm here for tourism. You know where are you going to stay? I'm going to be in Oslo. Uh, you you might want to have like your hotel address in case they ask like where your first place you're going to be is going to be. But usually they don't ask too many questions. So so there is that. So hope that helps. Um. Uh, happy birthday, Joseph. Joseph Cecil. It's his birthday. Everybody say happy birthday, Joseph. Happy birthday, Joseph. <laughs> um, I'm making plans to visit Japan next summer. Favorite cities to Kyoto. visit. I love Kyoto. Yeah, Kyoto is really cool. But Tokyo's awesome. But get out and see more. We didn't get to see nearly enough because we were there on Thanksgiving break. So we had we didn't we had, have nearly what, enough. Twelve time. days. Yeah, and and so. really we spent <laughs> and two it, with jet lag killer. <laughs> oh, you know what though? I took these jet lag. Yeah, you were fine. Homeopathic she was, jet lag things. She was not happy with the boys. I was so week. ticked at all of them because they slept, and I'm like, dude, we're in Tokyo, you know. But um, I those things got me through, so you might want to look into those. Okay, um, let's see. Oh, Scatman, you have to make a new channel trailer with Scatman's world, but with different lyrics. <laughs> he would me a few times. Read me a few times. Drew T, any good day trips from Rome? Um, off the top of my head. If you want to get up early, because I don't really recommend, like, because Florence is so overrun with tourism that actually I kind of like it better having my base in Rome, leave everything there, then take the first train in the morning up to Florence, spend all day in Florence, and I you pre, pre-book your t- your ticket to the Academy to see David and, pre- and for the Uffizi and see that, then come back on the evening train and do that just so you, you're going there just with a little day pack and you're not worried about anything else. So that's what I kind of like doing. But there's a lot of places you can go that are relatively nearby. But Rome has so much, it's hard to really think about day trips because a lot of people might go to the Amalfi Coast or Naples or something like that. We're a little bit farther, but... Um, On that, somebody was asking, Timothy Webb, is that who you were answering? Best district in the city in Rome for an Airbnb? Um, You know, I don't think it's... I don't think it's like a really big deal because... As long as you're near um, a metro stop or something, that you, yeah. But it's not the thing that is, the city hard. the city is super walkable. Yeah. Uh, so we usually just try to stay somewhere downtown, and we just walk everywhere. So you don't yeah. actually, if you're relatively near the center or in the center, once you have a place there, you and never have to spend any money or time. But on for the years, transport. we rented the same hotel um, out by the by the. It's not out by anything. Well, it's not out. That's in the. <laughs> whatever. It's not that close. Like in the direction towards Termini. Thank you. We by Termini, and we would. It's not that far. But whatever, we would take the the metro in, and then we would just stay the rest of the day. We would never take like, the metro. Yes, we did. No, you're thinking of the place we went to with Mark and them. That's the only time we Are took you the metro. Drugs? No. Yes, he is. No, we took the metro to go to the Vatican. That's where we took the Vatican. Okay. That, that was it. Anyway, all you do is you walk. You walk and you walk and you walk and you get shin splints because it's Rome. And all you do is you walk and you yeah. walk and you walk. So there is that. Did I say you walk? Yeah, because you make sure you have good shoes. Packing for cold destinations. Uh, Luggage can get filled very quickly. You're so right. So this is one of this goes against our usual thing about wearing easy shoes, slip on, slip off shoes when you fly. But if you're gonna have like boots and stuff like that, maybe wear those on the plane because then that's a heaviest thing that's not overfilling your your suitcase. Sucks when you go through um, security, security, but it could be something for you for that. Okay. Um, <laughs> Mark on an old <laughs> Den- Sean Bubba. That Mark too. on an old Denmark video. You responded to a comment that the thumbs down was probably Jocelyn because you didn't take her on that trip. Any plans to get back to Denmark? Yeah, we're gonna get there because I want to take the kids because the kids haven't been. And Jocelyn hasn't been to Denmark or Norway, so I kind of want to take them to see those things. So it is in the plans. Ryan Johnson, Mark, have you ever looked at your teaching reviews by your students on Rate My Professor? You have the best reviews. LOL. Good job. Yes, I have glanced at those occasionally. They're pretty funny to see. So it's it's nice to see that I, my students have appreciated my teaching. So it's very nice. Obrigada, Margarita. Yes. Um, um, so, Katsy, I have been to the Canary Islands. If you want to go um, and hang out with a bunch of drunk Swedish and German tourists, have fun. Because um, it's a, a cheap destination that a lot of people go to. So have a heads up. I would go not during school holidays and you'll be okay. 
Adam Tenhouse, or Tenhouse, thank you very much for the super chat. You guys helped us out a lot on our trip to Germany. Danke. Also, what is the difference between vielen Dank and Danke schön? It's kind of like thanks, thank you. Um, Danke schön is more of a like thank you very much. Proper. And vielen Dank is lots of thanks. Uh, so the, the Danke schön is much more proper, proper. as you often would say. And vielen Dank is just like a more of a slangery, slangier way to do it. So I hope that helps. And thank you for the super chat. Right below that, Eric Brown. How hard is it to get around China and Japan knowing only English? Um, Budapest. Okay, Budapest, you got no problem. <laughs> Tons of people speak English there. It's no big deal. Japan. Um, hey, you know what? It wasn't that hard because it's... In Japan. That, and China? But China was hard. China was hard. I was talking about Budapest. He's yes, Budapest. Oh. Budapest is easy, easy in Budapest. With, no Eng- with, with not knowing any language and just English. But Japan isn't too bad either. Um... It's a little it's more complicated, but it's pretty clear how they have everything signposted and stuff like that. And there's tons of information online, so like make sure you get your uh, international data plan, and you'll be okay. To do a lot of stuff. And you can get you can get pretty good maps and stuff. What was really difficult for me in Beijing, Mark was teaching. Now we're talking about China. China, <laughs> yeah. So let's go to China. Mark was teaching all day, and I had the kids and. Um, all of my maps, all of my books, everything was out of date because Beijing is constantly building. I mean, they are never still. So everywhere I went, I would have my map out and it was wrong. And everything's in Mandarin. And But what I did learn is that um, in the metro stops, there's always like the the this, the exits will be A, B, C, D. And um, they're all or usually just A, yeah, it's just the four, A, B, C, D. Sometimes well, there's five or six. Yeah, um, like, and then it gets a little crazy. But A is usually north. B is usually east. Like they, there is like a pattern to it and you'll figure it out. Um, but man, the problem is that they're just building so fast. It's really hard and nobody yeah. speaks English. Yeah. I mean, it, I, the word taxi is universal everywhere except for me in Beijing. And, and the thing is in Beijing, the taxi drivers, a lot of them aren't from Beijing. So they don't know where they you don't go. Necess- so you like have the map and just like point this is where you want to go so make sure you have take a card from your hotel with the address in you know in chinese Chinese. and and give that to them just have that with wherever you go and nobody can ring pinging either like a lot of people take the pinging stuff and it doesn't work if you don't know what pinging is pinging is when you write chinese in you know latin letters or is it not yeah. Yes. Yeah, not letters. So that so like you can say it out loud, but you'll say it wrong. So just don't worry about that. Tight budget. Someone wrote about a tight budget, and so then they go to Shanghai or Beijing. I would do Beijing. And a, um, stop moving. What? Okay. It's not me. Go ahead. Answer the question. No, I already did. Okay. Beijing, over um, I have a dairy sensitivity. How yeah, can someone with a food intolerance or allergy find out what's in the food um, they're eating when traveling? So you need to have that written in whatever language of whatever country you're going to. And, and you can find that out online. There's plenty of places that will have it for you. Absolutely. And dairy isn't a horrible one to have to avoid. I mean, um, you know, like we were, it's often something you, you can see, whereas if you have like a peanut allergy and they're cooking in peanut oil, you can't see that. So yeah. that is a little bit more difficult. And, to, I, and I've seen like in South America, we because I've we've taken students places in like South America, people are like, hey, we need to let you know that we have some allergies and they're helpful. In Europe, everyone, every place I've gone has been like more than, hey, we're going to make sure. I've had it where the chef has come out to like talk to the student. Like what kind, like is it all nuts or is it just tree nuts? And so we've had some good times with like good help, yeah. like experiences with that. Let's see. Prakash, thank you. Good to see you on here too. Uh, Nader, worst custom experiences. Took my brother's birth certificate as a kid to Canada, and they did a missing person search. Wow. Oh, crap. <laughs> yeah, mine was the guy stealing all my stuff and ru- doing a shakedown on me in, in Paraguay. But uh, that's all John, thing. do you ever plan on taking more Africa trips? Yes. Absolutely. Um, Ethiopia is, like, really high on my list. Now that I've gotten to go to uh, Rwanda and Tanzania, Ethiopia is my next one. So, oh. Hey, Joe Wiggins. See you later, buddy. Glad you could be here. Um, let's see. <laughs> Drew, hope you're doing well in SoCal. It's a little, well, we're in New Mexico, so it's not too far away. Uh, let's see. Do-do-do-do-do. Uh, Tracy Marshall, there's a Pictionary app which I found useful as I'm a vegetarian and had the picture and the word in the local language. And that's what's cool. You Sometimes go. you can find things like that. Thank you very much for sharing that's, that one. Yeah, that's a good tip. Okay, Lee Chen, how do you spend a week efficiently in Germany on a budget? 
the bread and butter the thing you're gonna do to save money there is if you're gonna be traveling around, you get the regional train ticket. So like for like 50 bucks for five people, you can travel for the whole day anywhere on the, not on the fast trains, but on the slow trains. So you can save some big money that way. So that'd be a good way to, to look things up because Germans are all about saving money. So going to Aldi or Lidl, the cheap grocery stores, I mean, you'll be fine. You'll, you'll find ways to save. Um, Daryl Hills, thanks guys for, for admitting, so thank, Ah, thanks guys. You've made my trails with my wife so easy. I'm glad. So say hi to your wife and I'm glad we could help out. Let's see. Hey, Moi Moi, Hobsno in Finland. Um, Al Allison, um, what shots should you get before traveling abroad? It depends on where you're, get, uh, where you're going. Um, quite frankly, going to Europe, you're not going to really need to get any shots. Um, when we went to Africa, we were actually required. Oh, went to Tanzania. 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 Yeah, I shouldn't say Africa. It's a very big continent. Yeah. Um, but Tanzania specifically required certain shots. Um, Rwanda didn't, but they had a list that said we would like you to have these things. And when we went to the airport in Kenya, they they checked everybody for um, temperatures and things in case somebody had and Ebola. Because Ebola. There's, a, there's a breakout in the country next to Rwanda, so there was that. Yep. Catley 200, thank you very much for the super chat. Thanks. Thank you for the videos from an Illinois neighbor. <laughs> Boys, Euro trip starts next Saturday to Paris, Edinburgh, Amsterdam, Amsterdam Munich, Munich, and Belgrade. Yeah, I didn't know Belgrade's code either. <laughs> Girls in December to London Heathrow, Paris, and Prague. London next June for Cards Cubs game. Keep it up. <laughs> You're rocking and rolling at these trips. Serious. That's awesome. And a cool. Cubs Cards game in uh, in London. Yeah. Wow, that's really yeah, cool. Yeah, I just heard about that. I should so. my sister to that. You get well. <laughs> We might, we'll be at a you know what then oh yeah we'll be somewhere yeah um jimmy okay yeah she talked about the miami thing before buddy she actually answered your question <laughs> i did dear and um i've been but not not to give you any advice because i was there with a friend so anyway yeah. so tyler cool guy 88 mark and jocelyn why do you fly on delta very often do you think it is the best airline for flying for the united states for the mainline carriers yes we fly with them because we think they're the best um, they also have miles that never expire. Um, they treat you really well. Like, um, and once it's it once you get um, status, which is pretty easy for us to do because we do fly a lot. Um, they have really good benefits, you know. So that's yeah. really important. Because even when I, we would get on their first status silver, we would still get upgrades all the time. So it was a really nice kind of thing. And but for me, it, it's not the status so much. It's like they didn't treat us like herded cattle. Like we used to fly United all the time. I used to really like United, but then they just started treating us like dog poop and it was like ripping us off and screwing us over so many times. It was like, we're done with you, United. We're done. And at that same time, Delta had really treated us nice on a flight to Iceland. And we're like, oh, this is a nice experience. So we tried them out a couple more times and then we just kind of fell and in love they with They want them. us over. Yep. So there's um, that. For MS, thank you. For and I, I saw that you had posted something earlier about Trotsky's home being um, on, on, uh, uh, like a house museum and then his grandson does the tours and I think oh, that's, that's cool. really cool. Henry Martinez, Good my morning. buddy. How are you doing, my friend? I know it's you know early in your your part of the country. Good morning, Mark and Jocelyn. Hey, have you guys thought about writing and editing a book on all your travels, like a memoir about traveling and backpacking the world, philosophy on honest travels? Gracias. Yes, we have Henry. I've been trying to get Jocelyn to work on this for a while. So we are working on a I... first one will be a family travel handbooks to help families that want to travel um giving them advice on everything i from have an outline started so there's that hey shut up it's an well outline. i didn't say it's a start <laughs> yes it's a start so it, we're getting there buddy so the the hope is for next summer season we'll have an ebook version that people can buy so they can have that but uh, we would like to make a handbook one so that you can take it with you because we know how these devices their their batteries die and you know you don't always have a chance to you know use it at certain spots so thomas godbold will you do more reviews within the u.s yes as we travel like you're gonna have a bunch of yeah i santa we, i filmed i filmed well no not a bunch of santa fe because we got well, the santa. i just filmed the, the don'ts of santa fe yesterday or the day before and then i did the scans of the u.s yesterday and we also did um don'ts of national national parks. park service part of it, part of it we've done that and then our friends uh bonnie and grant at waterfield life are going to collab with us and they're going to do some i think they're going to be in uh the smoky mountains this week and they're going to be uh filming for us their part so we're going to do a nice little collab so there'll be more u.s stuff i still have some chicago and kc stuff i've got like what to know for good the u.s so there's there's plenty more coming don't worry is denmark worth visiting yes it is worth visiting 
Jerry Chavez, have you ever been a speaker at travel shows? No, we haven't. We've always wondered how we can get in and do if that. If you know how to make that happen. Yeah, if you have any, <laughs> any suggestions, we, we would love to hear your suggestions. We could talk at some of these Mark's shows. Mark's a heck of a speaker, and I enjoy it, but I'm not quite as charismatic as Mark is. Oh, you're plenty charismatic. You got me. I love you. With your smooth talking. <laughs> um, yeah, Southwest is fun, too, so I'm going to put that on there for they airlines. Yeah, fun. New, News now, Fort Worth. Yeah, Southwest is pretty cool, too. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, well, it's it's doing the fast-moving by thing. Um, ah. Mark, do you miss Nova? <laughs> yes, I miss my Nova days, Pedro. Yeah, good times. But now, so for those who don't know, I did my PhD in Portugal when I was there. I was teaching at the Universidad Nova de Lisboa and their, um, the new the Nova University in Lisbon, the economics faculty. And it was like in this historic like old palace kind of stuff, like in downtown. And then they built a brand new school on the beach. Like, oh, look, every room has a view of the beach. I'm like, how are students supposed to study? Like, why would you listen to me when you've got people surfing outside and beach cabanas and stuff like that? I think it was because the professors are lazy and they're like, you know what? We're going to have class outside today and every day. <laughs> so, yes, Pedro, I miss Nova. <laughs> it would not be a bad thing to go back. Um, Jennifer. Oh, sorry. Oh, just up a bit. Jennifer H. Yeah, Jennifer H. Uh, I'm going to Dublin, London, and Athens in December. Recommendations Ooh, cool. for accommodations for a solo woman traveler. So, when I go on my own, I like to stay in a hotel, um, you know, and I just feel safer than, than in a house where I maybe don't know the area and I maybe don't know the language and things. I feel better when I'm in a hotel. So find a reputable hotel that has good reviews. So Seth Chaif, uh, have you ever been to Washington? I've been, yeah, the state I've been to. Uh, so I've been to Seattle, had a nice time there. I really like Seattle better than Vancouver, actually, if you're going to the Pacific Northwest. Um, and then if you mean D.C., yes, we've been to D.C. We have a few videos for both those, too. So let's see. Yeah, step my scary travel experiences. I think Jocelyn's was the there's the flight drop in in when we flew over well, the first time. Well, there have been several flight yeah. drops. <laughs> like me, there's when we flew over a hurricane and it was in Europe over Christmas in '99, and we dropped like four thousand meters, and then we dropped a thousand meters, and, and we're all I like, "We're that. all gonna die!" And these two drunk idiots on there, like, "We well, should. This is all inclusive, so we need to get our beers because that's part of the flight thing." And they're like. No one is getting, no one's moving anyway. It was really bad. Like the, the drunk idiots on planes, just, they're, they're, they're a scary, horror story themselves on planes. Yeah, like, I had that same experience um, in North Carolina without drunk people, but we were a very small plane and uh, dropping through the remnants of a hurricane was not cool. And then, um, yeah, also flying into Milan the first time, you know, when you go over mountains like that, you know, the Alps are kind of big. And um, the air is different and you kind of drop and I freak out. So, uh, this one, Claire, and a few other people have asked about Montenegro. Any suggestions for traveling to Montenegro? Uh, so, when you go there, I mean, a lot of people just go to Kotor because it's an easy day trip from, um, from Dubrovnik, which a lot of people do. Uh, if you actually spend the night there, you'll have basically the whole town to yourself because not a lot of people go longer into Montenegro. They just go to Kotor or they just go for the day. So, you can really actually get to learn a lot when you are there. The food's really good in, in Montenegro. Um, it's, there's a nice combination of like meat and pasta and all kinds of other stuff. So, it's a really nice, nice thing to do. Um, so, that'd be one thing I'd say for there. Um, Def Leppard rules rock. Thank you very much for the super chat. What are your favorite parts of Norway outside of Oslo and Bergen on a road trip? Um, if anytime you can go and ride, drive along the coast and going up north, that is going to be my favorite because just the natural beauty. It's like you need to make sure you pay attention to the road so you don't like fall off. So instead of taking pictures while you're driving, pull off and then take pictures. But don't just like pull off the side of the road and then jump out of your car because there might be other cars going by. So that would be the one thing I'd say about that, buddy. Um, D, we are all very well. Thank you for asking. I hope you are also. Yes. So, oh, Daryl Hills, real Washington is in the northeast of New England, where George Washington ancestors are <laughs> from. That's funny. Henry thank Martinez, you, Henry. thank you again, buddy. Cool. Thanks again, Mark and Jocelyn. It's really great to see you guys again. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. You have a great weekend as well, man. Uh, let's see. Oh, wow. Luis Garcia, you inspired me to travel to Rwanda. I'll try to travel there sometime next year. Yes. Awesome. You have a Do great it. time. It's amazing. Yeah, and I, we have a few more. I have a few more Rwanda videos to put out that'll help you out. Like, there's one Johnson had for packing. I've got, I think, the don'ts of Rwanda. Um, what else was there? I don't know. But yeah, the, the, it we have because we already had the shocks and impressions and stuff. We got a few already out, uh, but there'll be. I know because I, I was looking through the videos I need to put together because I've I've got the basic editing down for don'ts of Rwanda. Um, food, food of Rwanda, I think. 
and safety in Rwanda, and you have your packing of Rwanda one. Yeah. So we got that. Um. Okay. Uh. What is what area of the world has the very best food? The one that's putting in my belly. I don't know. I I can't say that there's. I love Greek food, but I'm I'm also half Greek. I love Italian food. I love French food. Um. I I love Portuguese food. I love Chinese and Japanese food. Actually, I like Japanese food more than Chinese food. Um, but but that, for me, the best vegetarian food is in Rwanda. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Vegetarian food in Rwanda was outrageous good. So amazing. Um, Let's see. I love South American foods. They're, I don't know. I like all the food. Yeah. Oh, I don't really like German food, though. Mark no. loves it. She doesn't, want, she doesn't like going to Germany anymore. Yeah. She doesn't like the food so much. I'm like, they have other food there. I'm good for it for like two and, but, days. But we're still going back to Germany in a couple <laughs> months, so we're good to go. My good mind, thank you very much again, buddy, for the super chat. Have you been to Istanbul? Seems like a fascinating place to visit. Yes. Me. we. Well, no, we have not been. Yes, it looks like a fascinating place, and we are going there next year. We so actually we will have were making that, that, that decision. That decision. last night. Yeah, last yeah. night we're... we're, we're Planning it all out. and I got my notebook out and I got dates having it. Yeah. So, Travis Davids, fermented shark in Iceland. Delicious, yes or no? <laughs> no, we you actually have a, have the vi- have we have a video, video of us eating that. It was actually, it was actually used part of it on a, sci- a science channel oh, uh, TV show. When Caleb <laughs> is eating it and he's like, oh, it's not so bad. And then he's like. No, 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 no. That was you. That was me? That was, no, because there's one where Caleb eats it and then tries to get Liam to eat it. And Liam's like, hell no. And then I have a video of her trying it. And you hear Caleb, like, he, I don't know, he's, I mean, he's, what, like eight or nine. He's like, he's like, yeah, it's it's okay at first, but then it's horrible. And then Jocelyn's like, oh, it's fine. And so he's like, no, but wait, she, it's fine. And she goes, oh, it's not so fine. And he's like, I told you. It was so funny. Oh, my gosh. It was great. <laughs> Yeah, um, oh. I don't know anything about Mickey so I can't really say, buddy. I'm sorry, Abby. Oh, um, I'm sorry, nor do I. Bear Grylls, come live in Edinburgh. I was just back there with my mom, so I got some more Edinburgh videos coming out. Uh, so I have a bunch of other stuff. For MS, thank you again for another super chat. That's very nice of you. Um, hey guys, thank you so much for your videos, tips on first international travel. Uh, so Joanna, make sure you go. I, we have a lot of like first time, like the the. There's one, the 10 loves of travel. There's a 10 hates of travel. I made the old, older ones that would be helpful. Um, the one we have on the secure at the airport, which is like a video from last week. So just go look on our recent uploads. And they'll give you some ideas there that'll help you out. Andromedist, um, I think, did I say that right? Um, you, that's really cool. You're making a channel on Georgia and the caucuses. I think that's really cool. So I'm, I'm happy for you. Yeah, because um, it's nice that a lot more people are starting to go there. So. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and Sahil, yes, you have to go eat at the Fabo vending machines in Amsterdam. Basically, if you haven't <laughs> been, we have videos on that too. This Basically, imagine hot bar food in a vending machine, but the vending machine, you put the coin and just open it up and pull it out, and it's so good. And it'll melt your mouth because it's so hot because it's, it's great. Uh, Def Leopard Rules Rock, thanks for the super chat. It's good to see you again. I haven't seen you on here for a while, but it's good to see you. What does Mark think of Russian food? I have not seen videos on that. So I lived in Lithuania for three and a half years, and I had a lot of friends that were Russian-Lithuanian, and anytime I'd visit their family, their grandma would be like, no, you need to eat. And they would just like the, the, the stuffed cabbage and stuff like that, and the borscht soup, the beet soup and stuff like that, the shashlik, the like skewered, skewered meat that's popular in a lot of places. I mean, I, I had a nice time eating there. The lot, a lot of sour cream, stuff like that. But it was very hearty stuff. It would get you. It got me through a lot of Lithuanian winters. So, so there was that. Um, JF, oh, if you are a U.S. citizen and fly into Amsterdam, then fly into a second city in the Schengen zone, uh, do you go through customs again? P.S. As one two hundred German, I'm offended. <laughs> there you go. Sorry. Uh, you know what? I'm part German too. My mother's side is German, so. so. So with with the customs things, once you fly into the Schengen area, you only go through customs that time. Once you go through there, then you don't have to worry about it anymore in the Schengen zone. Okay, so if you're flying into Paris and then to Greece, you'll go through passport control in Paris, and then you'll just get onto another plane and go fly to Greece. You actually don't get your bags usually either. You just go through customs and go to your next plane. Imperial Guard, yes, we're going to go to India. Um, Our problem is getting enough time to do it um, when it's not ungodly hot. So... 
But we're going to get there. It's going to happen. I promise. We just don't know when yet. Yeah, Deadpool 36701. How can you travel the world with little as little money as possible? So we have videos on how to travel the world, you know, how we afford how we save money to travel the world, how we save money while we travel the world, and how to budget for your travel. So just look up those topics with Walter's World on YouTube and there's plenty of stuff for you to do because a lot of it is just making a pro, like travel priority over other things. Like we haven't had cable ever. Basically, like we the only time we had it was it was included in an apartment we rented, and that saved us what 250 bucks a month. So that adds up to quite a bit of money after 10 years of marriage. So you have those things. Um, <laughs> Jimmy's having an iron brew, <laughs> my kids are so excited about that. Yeah, every time I was like, oh, I gotta bring him some back. Um, Deadpool, what are your tips and opinions on Egypt? We're actually going to go next summer, so we'll have videos next summer after we go personally. And so we'll have we... some good local stuff because we have friends here in the States who are Egyptian, and so they're going to. Yeah, and help and us one of her, her her brother is actually a tour guide in Cairo, so we're going to be working with him and try to get some videos with him too, so you get some more local perspective as well. Um, let's see, travel the world by foot. I don't know. I broke my foot the other day, and I, there's no travel the world on foot for me these days. Um, let's see. How? Hi, oh, so Andrew Rude. Hi. Do you know anything about Euro and a rail card for traveling Europe? I'm doing some research next year. So any of those rail passes, if it's like a, a regional one, that can be helpful. I usually see them more as a convenience because you can just hop on, hop off. But the thing is, on the fast train, sometimes you have to buy a supplement or a seat, and therefore it won't help you on the TGV because you have to get the you know extra seat reservation, and those aren't easy to buy online. You have to go and wait in line and go buy one, so that's kind of a pain. Uh, so what we usually do is we actually just buy destination tickets, like go and just buy the ticket from Berlin to Dresden versus the Eurorail thing. And if we're going to doing long distances, like the ones where the Eurorail would actually make money, we actually actually use like EasyJet or Ryanair to fly and to do that because it's cheaper than the actual train. So um, we kind of do those things. Paul Keith, when you retire, will you live in the USA? My dream for retirement is to buy a tiny little apartment in like different regions of the world and just hop from one to the other. However, we have to make more money to do that. True. So, Critton, Cretan 4K, thank you very much for the super chat. With the A, I guess you're down in Australia. We're looking to come see you all. So, that's <laughs> going to be coming up next year. Uh, oh, Cretan, you're right next day. Yeah. You actually have a question, too. So, I'm going to Italy next year. Not sure to go from north to south or south to north will be in late September. I would go north, north to south. To south. Um, yeah, I would do it that because way. Because of the weather. And Mark, hey, good name, by the way. You spelled the right way, too. Very nice. Um, so, hey, guys, which do you recommend for a nature lover, Poland or Finland? Both places are great for rural tourism, as we call it, but I think Finland is more dramatic culture, like yeah. nature. Um, the Missourian Lakes in the northeast of Poland are really cool, but I think overall I think you'll probably enjoy the nature kind of stuff in Finland a bit bit more. Um, let's see. We, oh, we got to get going. We yeah, are. we do. We have to go because we're meeting my cousin in a minute. And then we fly out um, today. So Yeah. Uh, Nicole Fun Laugh, going on a 25-day trip to Europe next year. Tips for long-haul vacations. Pack light. And rule of five. Remember, you can do laundry. Yeah. So the rule of five is like essentially five underwear, five socks, five bottoms, five tops. So you don't have to have that much. As a matter of fact, I usually come with three or four bottoms and like six tops. But the idea is um, you don't have to take a lot to make a lot of outfits. And also you can just buy things where you are. Um, and that makes it easier because if you're there for 25 days, lifting a big old suitcase is going to suck. Yeah. So just a couple more. Uh, DJ Amarazzi. Hey. Hey, I recently started following your channel and I really love your videos. Thank you. As someone who enjoys traveling and learn about languages and cultures, your videos are perfect. Thanks for your hard work. Thank you. Thank you. That is really nice of you. Um, Stefan, did you stay in su a summer house in Scandinavia before? I have. I actually lived in Finland for a year. Uh, so I, many times in the sauna and jumping into the snow and, and rolling around in the, the lakes, rolling around in the snow, jumping in the lakes and stuff like that in summer and winter. So yeah, it was a fun time. Um, JF, I'm working on a, on a, press kit and um, a media page um, for, for our website. I just, since school started with the kids, things have been a little bit crazy in our life, so I haven't quite gotten all of it done yet, but yeah. that is a good idea, and I need to get my butt in gear. 
Walker Depp, have you guys ever met Mark Weens on one of your trips? No, I actually wrote to him years ago when he was really small and asked about doing stuff, and that's when he was really taken off. He was really nice in his emails, like, I love to, man, but things are going crazy right now. Um, maybe one, some other time. So he was, the one time I had interaction with him, he was a nice guy, but I've, I've never met him. And I, we haven't really met too many other travel bloggers out there. Like, we'll, t we'll email them, but we never seem to bump into anybody. So well, growing that. up without borders. Although Chantal yeah. and I, we communicate, we talk and yeah, stuff, we've never but met we've person. never met in person. So. Tracy, you're very welcome for this super, for the live chat, and thank you for your love of their videos. It's very nice. Hispanic Burrito, awesome combo, hashtag life goals thank you very much um all right we got to get going i do we look absolutely tired absolutely have to go yeah because we have to go yeah yeah we got to call absolutely. and get the albuquerque and then we gotta get the airport so uh, back to, back to the boys tonight so we love you all thank you so much everybody for some really good stuff um and we'll be good so i'll just read some of these some of these things it looks pretty funny uh jimmy i, I look tired because i am tired because the, i've been filming and and I'm here for a conference, so I actually have to go to the conference and, and listen to speeches. And I talked at a speech or presented a, at a panel here. And, and so it's basically I have to do two jobs at the same time. So not a lot of sleep. Anyway, wish y'all the best. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye, Michael. Y'all be good. Um, y'all be thank you for everything. And have great times traveling wherever you're traveling to.